Hey, North Point. Have you ever been in an environment where you couldn't help but just get caught up in the excitement? I can remember the first time that I went to Death Valley in Baton Rouge or Death Valley at Clemson. And the excitement of the crowd on those football games, the moment when the mascot comes out, the moment when the war eagle shrieks, the moment when the tiger roars, there's nothing like listening to tens of thousands of people cheering with all of their heart towards a common goal. It's infectious, it's exciting. There's something on the inside of us that just responds to that. Have you ever been around a person who when you come in their presence, you just can't help but be a little bit more optimistic, be a little bit more excited about life, feel a little better about yourself. Well, that's what we're gonna be talking about today is our house habit, our next to last house habit, our 11th house habit, we cheer enthusiastically. In this year of application, we've been focusing on putting into practice the words and the teachings of Jesus, the things that we as Christ followers say are most important to us. We don't just want to be people who hear God's word, but we want to be people who do God's word, who do the things that he has asked us to do. And in order to be organized as a community around that goal, we we have a mission. And that mission is, well, you can say it with me, creating Christ-centered, culture-changing community. We want to create. We don't just want to be passive about it. We want to create Christ-centered, something that is centered on the person of Jesus Christ. We want to create culture changing. We don't want to be people who are culture acceptors, but we want to live out the culture that Jesus Christ set for us. And we want to do it in community because that is God's plan. And to help us to support that mission, we have 12 house habits. And we've been going through this season of talking through those habits. And it's been so incredible um, talking through first the connection relationship habits, then the growth or the transformation habits. And now we're in our impact habits. We've been talking through, we lead out, we give generously. And today, we cheer enthusiastically. We cheer enthusiastically. And so we're going to break this habit into two parts because even though it might seem like an extra thing, we cheer enthusiastically is one of the ways that we can create a Christ-centered culture-changing community that truly is engaging, that is attractional, but also is so incredibly deeply biblical. So the first part of the habit is we cheer, we cheer. And you know, sometimes that is so countercultural that you don't even have to get to the enthusiastically part. Sometimes just even saying anything good is countercultural within your business or within your work environment, within your school environment. Sometimes there's a culture of mocking and uh, doing all kinds of other things, anything but cheer. But the definition of cheer, the first definition is this, a shout of encouragement, approval, congratulations. A shout of encouragement, approval, or congratulations. And we choose as a community to cheer for other people. We want to cheer for other churches. We want to cheer for other companies. We don't want to just be quiet when, you know, that person's name comes up that's being successful in our industry. We want to cheer for them. We want to be loud with our approval. You know, we're so proud to be a part of a community that values um, gathering together so much that there are churches everywhere. It's such an incredibly churched area. And we cheer for every single one of those churches. We love what they are doing in the community. And we don't want to just be silent about it. We want to be loud about it. We don't have to decide when we hear something good that's going on down the street, whether we're going to cheer. We've already made that decision. Our reaction has been determined by our habit. We are people 
who cheer. This is something that right now in my mom season that I'm having to teach my daughter. You know, her little sister just got a big present. Um, she's a guitar player and her grandparents bought her a guitar and that was so exciting. But when we got in the car, the question was, are you happy for your sister? Are you ready to cheer for your sister? And she wasn't quite there. She was thinking about herself, what she was gonna get, what she wasn't gonna get, whether this was gonna affect her in a negative way. And so many times we're there too. We're trying to make the decision of whether we're gonna cheer for someone else's good fortune, whether we're gonna cheer for someone else's great decision, whether we're gonna cheer for another person's win or another person's season of life. Cheering for others doesn't take away from you. In fact, it's something that's so important that it becomes a habit because then we can always have something to cheer for because there's always someone in our world who's winning. There's always someone in our world who has something going on that's exciting and we can add value to that just by cheering. But you know, it's difficult to cheer for others out of your mouth if you are not cheerful in your heart. And the second definition of cheer is a state of feeling gladness, a state of feeling or gladness. And ultimately, I am responsible for the cheer in my heart. I am responsible for the cheer in my heart. Now, if you wanna be a miserable person, surround yourself with 24 hour cable news, social media, and other people who are complaining. Make sure that all of your input inputs are as negative as possible. Let that be the thing that drives your life and you'll find that your outputs will be far from cheerful. But if we want to live with that state, then we have to also have the inputs that are good and that are healthy and that are exciting and that are um, uplifting. And we have to do that intentionally because we're responsible for our level of cheer. You know, the Bible says rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Wow, that's a big ask. And it was an ask that was made to people who were in very difficult situations. And so you and I have the same ask on the table. Are we willing to rejoice in the Lord always? Are we willing to cultivate that sense of cheer on the inside of us? If we want to be a cheerful person, then we can't allow all of our circumstances or even the people in our life to determine our level of cheer. Instead, we have to let our relationship with God, we have to let the truth of the word of God, and we have to let what we have decided is our habit determine our level of cheer. John 16, says this, these things I've spoken to you that in me, you may have peace. And this is Jesus talking. In the world, you will have tribulation but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. That's the truth. You're gonna have issues, you're gonna have problems. This is not a Pollyanna message that says, oh, everything's just great. There's real issues, there's real problems, but this is the truth of the word of God. You can have cheer in your heart, even through the most difficult of circumstances. And sometimes that message can seem so incredibly insensitive. I'm not saying that you aren't going through pain. I'm not saying that grief isn't real. I'm not saying that mourning doesn't need to happen. What I am saying is that I can cultivate inside of myself a sense of cheer that begins to permeate my atmosphere and that gives me courage for every single battle. It's the cheer in our own heart that makes it easier for us to cheer for Others, if you have cheer on the inside, your cheer will come out towards others. That's just the way it is. You can say, oh, well, I'm a really cheerful person, but I'm just quiet. Um, I'm not talking about necessarily volume. When you're a cheerful person, when you have cheer on the inside, it comes out towards others. When you are not a cheerful person, it also comes out towards others. You aren't as good at hiding what's going on the inside as you think you are. It's so important that we cultivate that sense of cheer. You know, you don't have to wait for someone else to clap 
or to stand up or to cheer or to say something. No, your inward cheer, your state of gladness should generate your outward cheer, your shout of encouragement. Your inward cheer, your state of gladness should help generate your outward cheer, your shout of encouragement. And you have to build the attitude of cheer in your heart so that you can establish the action of cheering in your life. Proverbs 15, 30 says this, a cheerful look brings joy to the heart. A cheerful look, a smile. And that's my responsibility. I have a responsibility to give joy to others, to give away a cheerful look, to fill my own heart with joy and to allow it to spill over. Proverbs 20, uh, 12, 25 says this, worry weighs a person down. An encouraging word cheers a person up. Now, if I'm supposed to be for people, if I'm supposed to encourage, impart courage into them, if I'm supposed to be that kind of person, then shouldn't I be prioritizing, cultivating the cheer inside of me, and then cultivating the habit of giving that cheer away? My grandfather was an incredibly cheerful person um, because of the fact that he had really the joy of the Lord. His faith was in Christ. His hope was in Christ. His future was in Christ. He was one of those people that we would call a true believer, and he greeted everyone that he saw with these words. Hey, champion. Hey, champion. How are you doing? Champion. That word over and over again in stories people have told me literally changed lives because his cheer, his uh, shout of encouragement, his moment of enthusiasm towards them changed the way that they saw themselves. When I was a little girl, my mom taught me um, Psalms 1, and she used to say, Destiny, pay attention to these words because they will be so incredibly important for your life. And two little phrases kind of pop out of that scripture, of that chapter uh, for this moment. is It says, blessed is the man that doesn't walk in the way of the sinner, nor sits in the seat of of the scornful. And then another translation says, hangs out with mockers. Man, our world loves to scoff. Our world loves to make fun of. Our world loves to jeer at people. I mean, it's almost a sport. It's something that people take great pride in. Being a troll on the internet, what is that? That's just jeering. That's just going out of your way to spend your time and attention to harass someone else, to tear them down, to do the opposite of cheer, to jeer. We don't want to be those people. We don't want to buy into that mindset. Instead, we want to, in the face of other people's jeering, keep cheering. Keep cheering. I cheer because I've made it a habit in my life. But we at North Point, we don't just cheer. We take it one step further. We cheer enthusiastically, enthusiastically. We cheer with an abundance of enthusiasm. Philip likes to say, we don't do the golf clap when somebody comes to our church. We don't do the golf clap when we hear about missions and what we've been giving. We don't hear do the golf clap when we cheer for the middle school or for graduates or whatever we're doing. No, we give the crazy football shout. Why? Because we want to get loud for other people. We want to give them that experience of feeling cheered for enthusiastically. And you know what? It makes such a difference. It makes a difference no matter how long somebody has been following Jesus. Um, it was just a couple years ago that I was preaching and I was preaching in a new place at an event that I had never preached at before. And it was a little bit of a weird format. I had a very limited amount of time. And honestly, it was a little bit intimidating. And so I'm walking into this venue and I meet the pastor where the venue is 
where the event is taking place. So it wasn't his event, but it was his church. And as I started to preach, within about two or three minutes, he is on his feet, preaching with me, cheering enthusiastically, and honestly giving me the courage to give my very best in that moment. Now that's a clear example of what it looks like to cheer enthusiastically, but what if we did that for our coworker? What if we did that for our boss? What if we did that for our fellow student? What if we just chose to cheer enthusiastically, to be excited for them about what's going on in their life? Um, enthusiasm is defined as a strong excitement of feeling, but enthusiasm is borrowed from the Greek word that means inspiration or possession by a God. Isn't that beautiful? Literally, it means God within. And as Christians, this is what we believe, is that God came and that he dwells within us, that his spirit, when we accepted Christ, dwells within us. And, and Romans 8, 11 says it. It says, the spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. Wow, we literally have enthusiasm available to us all of the time. So we cheer like we are possessed by the God of the universe. We cheer not mildly, but wildly. And see, enthusiasm is something that you, you don't just have to reserve for when you cheer. Enthusiasm can become a habit. It can become a part of your life, living possessed, living an inspired life, living an inspired life. Can you imagine what that would be like if you woke up in the morning and you said, God, I'm awake. I cannot wait to go through this day with you, living that inspired life, looking for the people that you can inspire as well, Romans 12, 11 says this, never be lazy, but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. Never be lazy, but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. You have to train yourself to be enthusiastic. You have to train yourself. And so many times we're like, oh, I don't just don't have the energy or, oh, it's just fake. No, we're not talking about being fake. We're talking about cultivating in yourself enthusiasm for every day, choosing to bring the energy, choosing to bring that exactly where you are. You have a choice. I had somebody who worked for me um, a few years ago and in the mornings they would just walk in and they wouldn't greet anyone. They wouldn't say anything. They would just, you know, get to work and they would kind of grunt when you talk to them. And finally I, I confronted this person and I said, Hey, that's not the way that we behave. That's not the culture that we create here. When we walk into a room, we greet everyone. When we walk into a room, we smile and welcome people into our presence. We bring the energy. We don't wait for the energy to catch up with us. Are you cultivating enthusiasm in your everyday? Or are you just allowing your feelings and your mood to dictate the energy that you're bringing. The truth is, is that you have the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead available to you if you're a Christ follower. So you have a choice. You really can choose to live with enthusiasm, but you do have to train yourself to be enthusiastic. Before you ever are gonna cheer for somebody else with enthusiasm, you have to live your life with enthusiasm because to give enthusiasm you have to possess enthusiasm. And so many times our enthusiasm comes from our inner dialogue. It comes from our inner dialogue. What are you thinking about? Are you constantly rehashing that fight? Are you constantly having an imaginary conversation with a coworker or a boss or a, even an ex-girlfriend that's never even going to happen? Are you constantly imagining worst case scenarios? Are you constantly contemplating whether your life is this or that and measuring it next to um, your ideal expectations or maybe someone else's expectations of you or maybe somebody else's success? What does your inner dialogue look like? 
there's two things that the inner dialogue of a Christian should definitely reflect, is I am loved and I am forgiven. I am loved and I am forgiven. Do you know that today? Would your inner dialogue reflect that you know that you are truly loved, that you are truly forgiven? But there's another part to that, is I have purpose. I have purpose and I have value. You know, I was talking to somebody the other day and they said, uh, I think people take personality tests so that they can find their purpose, so that they can find their worth. And I thought that's so incredibly true. As helpful as personality tests are, and I believe in all of them, um, I love things that give us insight into who we are at the moment so that we can improve and cultivate ourselves. But it is true. Sometimes we spend our whole life searching for outside validation of our worth when Jesus already showed us how much we are worth. He gave his very life for us so that we could live loved and live forgiven. When your internal dialogue is not right, it's hard for your external dialogue to be right. If you're having a hard time cheering enthusiastically for the people around you, maybe you should check your inner dialogue. See what's going on. When you're telling yourself the right things and you're creating enthusiasm in your life, then you're able to give that enthusiasm away by saying the right things. You're able to give it away by saying the right things things. But we have to develop that habit. You have to develop the habit of cheering. You have to develop the habit of living with enthusiasm. But when you put those together and we begin to live internally with cheer and enthusiasm, and then we begin to live externally with cheer and enthusiasm, because I do not believe it's possible to have true cheer and enthusiasm on the inside and not see it come out on the outside. I don't believe that, that the joy of the Lord is so deep down in your heart that your face doesn't know. I don't believe that, that you can feel so like inspired in your life and yet nobody around you would describe you as inspired. No, those things come to the surface. And we have to begin to cultivate that inner cheer, cultivate that inner enthusiasm so that it will naturally show through. And that's where the habit of we cheer enthusiastically comes from, is we choose to cheer enthusiastically for special guests at our church. We, we choose to cheer enthusiastically for other businesses and for other people in our life. We choose to cheer enthusiastically for good reports. We choose to cheer enthusiastically when we're listening to someone preach or speak or share their heart. We choose to cheer enthusiastically for our kids and for our parents and for our siblings and for everybody in our life. We don't hold back our approval. Instead, we choose to cheer enthusiastically for people exactly where they are. When you choose to do that, you make such an impact. You don't know the courage that you are imparting into people. You don't know what you are doing in their life. Can't tell you how many times that I've watched Philip walk into a restaurant and begin speaking to the person who was taking our order and his natural cheer and his natural enthusiasm just comes through. And by the end of our time with that person, um, their mood is lifted. They feel more inspired. They feel better about themselves. What happened? It's just the habit of we cheer enthusiastically, supporting that mission and impacting the world. I believe that we all want to be that person. We all want to be the person who creates that environment I talked about in the beginning of this. We want to be the person who we're, when we walk into the room, suddenly other people are encouraged. And the truth of the matter is, is that we can all be that person. It's not a personality thing. It's a Jesus thing. When we cultivate that cheer and enthusiasm on the inside, it can't help begin coming out on the outside. So we're ending every sermon with a lead acrostic. 
Um, and this year, and I love this because we want in this year of application to lead ourselves and our families um, really, really, really well. And so the first uh, part of the acrostic is L and it stands for learn. So what did you learn today? And today the takeaway we want you to have is I must cultivate cheer and enthusiasm within my own heart. I must cultivate. That means it's probably not gonna just happen naturally all the time. Even if you're an optimistic person, you have to choose to cultivate it within your own heart. The E is evaluation. And this is what we are going to evaluate as a community this week, is internal cheer, gladness, and enthusiasm, inspired living, evident in my life. Is internal cheer, gladness, and enthusiasm inspired living evident in my life? If you aren't sure, then be brave and maybe ask somebody who's close to you. Ask your spouse, would you call me somebody who cheers enthusiastically? Maybe evaluate the way that you speak during a couple days. Go, man, am I a person who jeers? Am I a person who mocks? Am I a person who constantly makes fun of? Or am I a person who cheers enthusiastically? And then the application is choose one person to intentionally cheer enthusiastically for today. There's somebody in your world who needs you, who needs your voice, who needs your cheer, who needs you to root for them, to make them feel the way that pastor made me feel, like I had the courage to do what I was called to do in my life. And then just do it again. And then just do it again. Together, we really can accomplish our mission. Together, we really can create Christ-centered, culture-changing community. And together, we really can cultivate this habit of cheering enthusiastically. And I believe that it will impact you, it'll impact your family, it'll impact your future, and ultimately, it'll impact our world. Will you pray with me? Father, I thank you so much for the people who are watching right now. Lord, for any of them who don't know you, I pray that they would know in this moment that all they have to do is reach out for you. That all they have to do is just say, Jesus, I want to follow you. And you are right there walking with them every step of the way. Lord, for those of us who listened to this and said, man, I, I, I really have created a, a atmosphere of jeering in my life, not cheering. I pray that we would change, that we would begin to cultivate that cheer, that enthusiasm in our daily life. Lord, remind us that your Holy Spirit is with us every step of the way, that we aren't just doing this in our own power, but we are doing it in your strength. Let us be people who intentionally cheer enthusiastically every step of the way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.